There you go. Oh, so since that her camera doesn't work uh, on this network, that's why it's off right now. No worries. Okay. All right, let's get started. Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for our last um, Thursdays of the Heart for October. Um, it has been great to get to pray with everyone and be able to read scripture together and uh, just reflect a little bit on it each week. Uh, just so that you guys know, and I'll say it again in the end, but we're going to do another set of these Thursdays from the Heart prayer times uh, during Lent. That way we have a little a little set time of prayer at the beginning of Lent, um, the first four weeks in right after Ash Wednesday on Thursdays. And you can add that to one of your Lenten practices if you would like to join us. But yeah, so during Lent, March, I have the dates checked, March 6, 13, 20, and 27. And I'll send them in an email later. But uh, yeah, those are the dates that we'll be meeting again in March. If you guys want to join me, let's start in a quick prayer. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. <clears throat> Come, Holy Spirit, teach us how to pray. Lord, thank you so much for the gift of this day. Thank you for everyone that you were able to bring here today to pray with us and for everyone that wasn't able to make it today. We pray for their health and for their safety and that they may be having a good week so far. And also for anyone that was able to join us in the first couple of weeks, we also pray for them and for any intentions that they shared with us throughout the month. And we lift up to you our hearts and we ask that you may continue to guide us to understand your love more deeply each day. We love you. All right, let's jump into the reading of the gospel for this upcoming Sunday. And I have my Bible with me today, so I'm going to read from there. And it's going to be a little tiny bit different at the beginning. I think there's like an extra sentence, but um, it is from a reading from the gospel of Mark. The first commandment. And one of the scribes came up and heard them disputing with one another. And seeing that he answered them well, asked him, Which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, The first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no one commandment greater than these. And the scribes said to him, You are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and there is no other but he. And to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself is much more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered, Wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And after that, no one dared to ask him any question. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. All right. Um, well, we have the first commandment. And um, I think one of the things that I was thinking about that I wanted to share and just like ask for any thoughts since I thought last week was really nice to be able to just open up the floor a little bit for anyone to share anything on their minds as well. But uh, thinking about tomorrow being All Saints Day, reflecting a little bit on my aunt who passed away uh, just a couple of months ago, and mm -hmm. just like thinking about that first commandment and one, to love God with all that we are, but then also the call to love our neighbor. And there was a lot of suffering like in my aunt's life. And I knew that and I saw that. And I know that 
when I was a teenager, there were times when she and her family lived at my parents' house with me. And it was hard to love my neighbor being like her and her family, just because she also had little kids and I was a little kid and we just like, we're not best friends all the time. And it was hard. And then just like seeing them like move out and then also her kids growing up as I was growing up and just like the change of heart that like happened there with me and my relationship with my aunt and like I didn't feel like that tension anymore and I there was like a deep love that grew from um, I think just from like the distance of not being able to see her every day but then also, when I did get to see her, like, I experienced, like, how much she loved me. And I, like, felt bad for all the times that I was a little brat as a teenager. But also, yeah, it was really beautiful to, like, know, like, I would sometimes talk to my mom on the phone and just, like, ask her how my aunt was doing. And um, she was, she would always be like, oh, yeah, she says hello. And she's always asking, like, how, how's Jocelyn? How's she doing in Milwaukee? How are her jobs? And so I knew that she cared about me in the same way. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't, I think when I went to her funeral, it was the first time that I went to anyone's like funeral, the wake and the funeral. And which I'm grateful that I hadn't had many losses in my family before, but it was really like heartbreaking but also like I knew that I I had this like different glimpse at like the afterlife and what where I hoped my aunt would be which would be in heaven and it like transformed like that whole entire experience of being at the wake and at the funeral and like her burial where um, I had a really big honor by my cousin her son she he asked me if I would just say like a couple of words like at the when she was going to be buried and just like say a couple of words to everyone there and it was really unexpected but it was really awesome to be like whoa like thank you thank you Thea um from wherever you're at like for letting me be the one to say just a couple of words about God and like his love for her for his daughter and Uh, just like reminding everyone to continue to pray for her and for her soul and I don't know it was I wasn't expecting that that day when I was getting ready and going with my family and um, just a little a little story to share on just like being able to love our neighbor well even in the midst of like struggle and yeah any any thoughts or stories on um this reading and how you can connect to it as well. Jocelyn, so beautiful. Uh, Just briefly, if you can see in my little background here. Is that it? Yeah, this is uh, my grandma and grandpa, photos of them. Um, She is 94 and going strong. He died when I was in high school and we were very close. Uh, Granddad, uh, my middle name is from him, William, William Femmer. And uh, yeah, just, I mean, a lot of love for him. You know, still feel some sorrow that he's not here, but also in Catholic life, like these people are still with us, you know. Angels and saints watching over us, people we love who've gone before us, um, you know, or with the Lord. We, we pray and trust. So, um, yeah, amen, Jocelyn, both kind of the joy and sorrow of this season. Appreciate that as well. It's one thing is you realize as you get a little older, I never understood the older members of the family saying, I know more people on the other side, they would say, you know, and now I know what they mean. <laughs> You know, I've lost actually two of my dearest friends this year. Uh, We were friends from kindergarten. So over 65 years. So uh, so I understand what you mean. And and when it's a relative, it's even uh, it's equally difficult. But it's I think you're right Father, to remember that that 
in a sense, I, I always remember at every communion, we're united not just with the Lord, but with all those whom we love who are with the Lord at that time. So it's always good yes. to remember that when we pray uh, at the Mass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's one of my favorite moments, um, just like when, like being able to like picture just like heaven and earth, like that coming together. We're like, we're like, okay, we're all here right now. <laughs> Hi, Grandma. <laughs> exactly. You know, the, the the Irish have a phrase, the thin places, or where heaven and earth are close. Well, the mass is the thinnest of the places, <laughs> mm -hmm. in a sense, where where God is always able to touch us in a way that uh, is so intimate more than any other time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's amazing. Susan, I see that you have your hand raised. To the chat. Chris said, my heart is restless until it rests with and in the Lord, God alone. Also, I show my love for God and how I love the person and how I love the person I have the hardest time with. Right. Very important and hard to do <laughs> sometimes. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Susan? No, we can't hear no, you. No, we can't, Susan. You could just type it out maybe if uh if you're having yeah. trouble yeah <laughs> and i think um just to let you all know that today uh oh susan said oh dear well the veil is thin uh with the greater the love. greater love greater love i think yeah mm -hmm. Maybe now we can hear you. I heard a little bit of static. Maybe not. Um, but I was going to say that today our staff or father celebrated mass with our staff. Uh, and we made sure to pray for everyone's intentions that we have shared this last month over Thursdays from the heart. And Susan said, the greater the love, the veil becomes thin. Yes. It is so true. And just being able to experience both God's love, like you said, Harry, but also to be able to like experience our, our family's love, family members love in that moment um, where we can almost go beyond, yeah, just like our human nature and know that like our souls are still able to love them. Uh, yeah, Harry, thank you for turning us over to prayer intentions. Any, Anything that you have that we can continue to pray for uh, moving forward. And Harry said, praying especially for those in the Middle East and Ukraine. Yes, for sure. And angels and the saints, the eternal spirits of others. I also wanna pray for all, I have a group of friends that are all expecting. So just for safety, safe um, deliveries for them in the upcoming months and for their pregnancies to continue to go well. And then also for all those in Florida and Carolina that experience damage in their homes, just as they, in these weeks and months that are coming up, as they continue to um, go back to their homes and just uh, anything that they have to like uproot and fix in their homes for that to go smoothly and for them to be able to receive the help that they need. Are there any prayer intentions from your side? Thank you. 
prayers for all those who have lost children, which is going to be the um, prayer intention or the Pope's prayer intention for this upcoming month, um, starting November 1st. All right, let us close in a quick prayer. Uh, I think some of you may know it earlier. I was praying part of it with my coworkers and they didn't know it. So um, hopefully if you do know it, join with me uh, as we pray for um, all those that have passed. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, we thank you for this day and we lift up to you all of our family and friends, um, all of those acquaintances that we know that have passed and we pray for their souls. We pray for all of the saints in heaven to be able to continue to guide us closer to you as we follow their example and witness of faith. Uh, for all those in purgatory, uh, we pray eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light sh shine upon them. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed to the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, everyone, and prayers for you all uh, for the upcoming months. And hopefully we get to see you again at the start of Lent for a couple more weeks. And yeah, let us know if you ever have any prayer intentions that you want us to pray for. And you can email them to me or give me a call and I can write them down and uh, I'll type in my, my email address so you have so you have it. And then, yeah, any other questions that you may have or if you want to join our mailing list or anything else, let me know. Um, yeah, I'm always an email or a phone call away. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Father Joe, for sending it. <laughs> Father mm -hmm. Joe was my tech person for this this month, which is great. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Jocelyn, Harry, Chris, Susan. So great to see you, and happy Feast of All Saints. Yes. Thank you so much. <laughs> much peace. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, Father. My pleasure. Um, I'll... I didn't know that your middle name was William. You That's well, cool. Joseph William. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Does William, our coworker, know that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe not. Yeah. I wonder, what's his middle name? I wonder. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, cool. Great job. Um, I'll save the recording, pass it along, and probably fine if you want to just do a summary next week or something yeah oh I'll, I'll write it right now but i'll send it to jenny and on monday because i just realized that i want to send it probably from my work email but, okay. or i'll send it to you and then you can share it with her forward uh, it sure. to her yeah that's so, fine mm -hmm. perfect sweet all right cool thanks so much you on monday See you then. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>